So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. And welcome to a certain point of view. Uh, today, as usual, I have got uh, my co-pilot in this thing, uh, the guy that's always out there. We're not going to say anything about lightsabers this time because we got too much. Uh, we had too many laughs out of it last time. But here he is, the hairy man himself, Solo Wookie. Solo Wookie, say hi to everybody. What's up, everybody? Good to be here. And and hey, listen, this is a special episode. It has a lot to do with with one of our members here that we really like. Uh, he's going to fill us in a lot of stuff. Stay to the end because we actually, for you guys who are full collectors of collecting runs and stuff like that, we have uh, a couple books and a couple things you guys might want to check out at the end. But before that, uh, we have a question for him just to start it right off the bat before we even introduce him. Leaky, uh, why why are the clone troopers better shots than the than Vader's actual first? Well, they've been uh, basically programmed that way, right? The, the stormtroopers, they, they were trained from uh, birth. Basically, no, right? just bad. They're just bad shots. They're just bad shots. They're just bad shots. They're bad shots. All right. Hey, so today, real quickly, Leaky, this is what we're doing. Uh, Leaky is going to be talking a lot today. I'm actually going to move him to his spot here because Leaky is a member of the 501st for you guys that don't know. Um, and he's done a lot of good stuff before. And we kind of just wanted to give him a rundown because I know everybody hears about the 501st now. I know like when I was younger hearing about the 501st, I didn't actually realize some of the stuff that was going on there. Um because, you know, we'd hear about them in stories or video games and stuff. I think uh, Leaky's going to give us a little bit more, just like he was with the actual fact why clones shoot better than the non-troopers. He is our trooper expert. I think he's going to give us a little bit more of an insight into that. Um, Man, I'm excited because I have so many questions. Dude, it's all the time. <laughs> it, like, it's this is a pre-show. We start asking a thousand questions like, stop. It's We're something not gonna I, I don't know a lot about. It's something I have some background with, but there's so many unanswered questions. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that our viewers are probably in the same boat. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you've been to cons or you've been to sporting events or a couple other things, you've probably seen these guys. Um, he probably can explain a little better because I think there's a difference between uh, cosplaying and probably the 501st. But hey, Leaky, take it away. Tell us, tell us, tell us what you got on the 501st. All right. Well, um, I guess I'll start out by saying what the 501st is. A little bit of history. So the 501st is um, the largest costuming organization. Costuming, that is, wearing costumes. Um, and I don't want to say it's endorsed by Lucasfilm, but it is uh, accepted by Lucasfilm. It's accepted by Disney. So. So let's start out with how it started, how the 501st got started. Way back in 1997, there was a guy by the name of Albie Johnson. And uh, so this was right around the time when the, uh, the special editions of the original trilogy were coming out. And uh, it all started, um, he lost his, uh, Albie lost his leg in a car accident. It was right before Empire Strikes Back came out. And uh, I believe a friend of his got him some armor. He actually showed up at the event for Empire Strikes Back. And he was he was a big hit, he loved it. So he started it then, started to grow, but it really wasn't officially accepted almost 10 years later when George Lucas actually attended the Rose Bowl. Um, he was, he was the, the, the honorary lead of the Rose Bowl and he needed a ton of stormtroopers. So up to that, up to that point, we were just kind of a bunch of knuckleheads dressing up like stormtroopers. Um, and another thing happened in Albie's uh, life. His daughter, um, Katie, I think, around 2005, uh, was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, that's when he took it kind of the next level. Um, and ever since then, it just grew and grew and grew. But one other thing I'll mention about the history was he kind of looked at it kind of like he used the Roman Empire as a model, which sounds a little weird. But the idea was he wanted to have garrisons of the 501st all over the world. Basically, and, and essentially what it was, was charity. We, we were showing up at various things like children's hospitals, events, charity events to raise money, but really to bring, kind of bring uh, smiles onto kids' faces, especially children's hospitals. Um, so how did I get into it? Um, wait, wait, hold on. I think we got more questions. I think okay, we got yeah, yeah, tons of questions. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. So about his daughter, Katie, is she, is she the one that they did the droid off of, the astromech yes. droid, the pink yes. one? Yep. That is her, right? And, and that's, that's what really I was cool. going to bring up. Is it if, for those of you who don't know, there is an astromech droid. It is the pink droid. It is the only pink droid, and they made that for Katie, and it is a very, very special and deep-meaning droid. So it for is, all of is. you that don't know, please... I mean, that is an amazing 
It, 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 it was like R2 KT. KT. Yep. Yeah, yep. KT. That was and Nelly's uh, daughter. And what's cool about that too is, uh, and you'll probably get into this, but somebody else is a big fan and he ended up putting it in Clone Wars because she, she had some stuff to do with Ahsoka later on and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure we're going to get into that. Uh, another question I had, so like, Oh man, you said so much that I'm like crazy with it already. All right, so in '97 they had it right, so it took them ten years, right? So then they, so it's like '97. Then they started. It was regional based, and then, well, so it it really it started, obviously, kind of here in the United States in California, but it quickly spread, and it wasn't really um, like a formal charter or organized. But once it once it kind of just spread, he was like, well, we're gonna have this numbering system. And each TK has like either a three digit, four digit, or even a five digits now. And so when they went to the different regions around the world, and ours here in Michigan is the Great Lakes region, um, that's when each region started to organize locally. Um, yep, that's ours. We're the Michigan chapter. Um, and this is where. No, no, wait. Yeah, it, yeah. Is the region done by state or is it done by area? So if. Like the Great Lakes chapter, does that does that surround a lot of the Great Lakes in in, or is it just Michigan? Like, does it cross a border, or is it just Michigan Great Lake chapter? No, like, it, how do it, they? How do you guys provide um, that? It's more regional, like you said, than state based. Like, we got folks in Ohio, some in. Uh, okay. I think we got a few people in Wisconsin. So oh, yeah, it's more regional than state based, and it has a lot to do, I think, with the membership, like how many people that you can get involved in it. Um, and actually here in Great Lakes, we have our counterpart called the Rebel Legion. Uh, so, but the 501st was originally meant to be stormtroopers. And one of the things that, um, like, especially at national events, they really only wanted one or two of the main characters, like one Darth Vader, one Chewbacca. But stormtroopers, you could have as many as you want. So it really started as what we call TK based. You know, and the TK is like, I'm a, my, my primary costume that I have is an Empire Strikes Back TK. So I'm a TK ESB. Um, but then it started to spread, and then the, the sister organization of the Rebel Legion came out, and that's where you got your Princess Leas and your Chewbaccas and all of that. So let me ask you this, too. And I, I kind of already know the answer on this because we talked about it before. But, like, from 97 to 07, you're like, yeah, then Lucas kind of gave us the okay because he needed a bunch of troopers there. But it, the, the 501st for a little bit there, if I'm not – Incorrect. It wasn't exactly. Uh, were they getting cease and desist? I don't know if they were getting cease and desist, but I know it wasn't. <laughs> well, well I mean, really uh, welcome. Yeah, with wasn't our, Lucas, uh, yeah. It wasn't a Lucas Club. Yeah, there were there were some threats. There were there was, but honestly, it was more they were concerned with um, harming the brand or harming the the image. Right? They weren't sure who these guys were. They were showing up dressed um, in official. You know. The, the whole the whole part of the costuming organization is it, it's screen accurate as possible, mm -hmm. right? And they go through a very, very, I went through a grueling vetting process for my costume. They want it to be screen accurate. And really, like with any miscommunication, it was really kind of Lucasfilm wanting to make sure that the brand wasn't getting tarnished. But once they kind of understood that they were very, very particular and very um, careful about approving a costume, right? Because... As you, uh, you know, like you think about cosplay, some of the cosplayers um, are very, very diligent about making sure their costumes are accurate. Other times, you know, you have a stormtrooper, a guy with a Home Depot bucket on his head, right? So they wanted to, they wanted to be um, an official approval process. We actually have a um, uh, we have one in the Great Lakes region, somebody that approves all the costumes, and they and even if you want to be New Hope versus Empire versus Return of the Jedi, they take you through some heavy-duty scrutiny. So that was really kind of where the threats came out. Of okay, now, quick people. question on that. Yeah. You guys have formed, not only through all of that, uh, the scrutiny and, and the um, the process, the um, okay process and and submitting everything to get it okay to get it you know able to be represented so to speak um now is it now and i could be totally wrong this is just hearsay that's why i'm asking that you guys have gone 
through a process to make another site and work with some companies and Lucas to actually get authentic made gear. Is that is that correct? Like, well, you know, isn't sort there a of, company sort of. that's making um, Stormtrooper? Yeah, there's outfits? so kind of what happened was for the longest time, there was a lot of how the armor got built or the different costume. And and you guys will remember a company called, I believe it's called Rubies. Right. Rubies would make Halloween masks and things of that nature. And then over time, what um, guys in the 501st would do is they would start making their own armor. They'd vacuum form armor. They would get parts. They, the E11 blasters, they, they could actually mold these and make them. Well, that was kind of starting to get into the merchandising realm, which was a little tricky. Right. So. They never really had, or I should say Lucasfilm, and this is, again, this is kind of my recollection, so don't take it as gospel, was they didn't like when members of the 501st were buying, producing, and selling pieces of armor or, or Star Wars merchandise, especially like the blasters. So when you made your own, when you actually created your armor, created your guns, created all the pieces, they didn't really have a problem with that. And that's kind of what kept us in the clean. Well... Recently, and, and I believe this might have been 2015, right around Star Wars Celebration, this company called Anavos, called Anavos, they became like the official um, producer of Star Wars costumes for Lucasfilm. And really, we were encouraged in the 501st to purchase these. And the nice thing about Anavos, well, it's kind of pros and cons, right? The pro is Anavos was you got it screen accurate with assembly instructions, all complete with a helmet out of the box. Before that, you had to go all over the, the country and sometimes all over the world to find the different pieces of armor. So Anavos gave it to you all in one package. But as you can imagine, the con of it is, you know, they now it's one source, right? Everybody goes there. They're difficult to get. They're expensive. Um, and all these guys that made their, their parts and the vacuum formed pieces and all of that, they started to feel like, oh, they're going to get pushed out. Um, now, I can't... I can't tell you if that's actually happened. I mean, I know like on my, on our chat rooms and our boards where we acquire, you know, parts of our armor, especially if we get parts that get broken or ripped. Um, I can still reach out to guys that can make me pieces of armor, but um, it's really discouraged. They want you to go to Anavos. Yeah. So that was part of it back in the day before Anavos, if I understand correctly, there was like almost like not so much a black market for these pieces, but like a lot of it, you were supposed to have built yourself, correct? And yes, if you yes. didn't though, there were guys who specialty in certain forming of certain parts. Like if you needed like an arm guard or, yep. or something that attached differently, because when you were saying about the process before it all had to fit to form too, correct? Like you couldn't have loose pieces or yep. off colored pieces. Like it all had to be the same. So some of this stuff could take, years just to create because did they give you blueprints on how to do it or did you yeah they did they they had um and again i don't want to get myself into trouble here but there was specifications if you mm. want to put it they, they were almost like approval specifications and you didn't have to look too far out on the internet to find yeah. the exact um you know yeah the exact around that guide too. to assemble yeah. um but these were all more like, hey, if you want to be screen accurate, if you want to look like a stormtrooper in Empire Strikes Back, here's exactly what you need. How many blue uh, stripes on both sides of your, your helmet? You know, how many, um, the color of the little, um, uh, the little chits on your, on your chest and that. So it was out there and it was available, but a lot of it was, I don't want to say bootleg, that just wasn't officially endorsed. Right. It yeah. Well, I mean, it's not really guys right. watching diligently to the movies and, and freeze framing and all of that and coming up with these guides. And they actually have different levels. They, they have just your base level you get approved to be in the 501st. And then they have like elite levels. Uh, so you can be like, you know, even more authentic. What I mean, can I ask you this? And you can say, I don't want to answer it. Roughly, what does this run? Like, what was an what was a stormtrooper outfit run? Oh roughly? man! Well, so when I assembled mine, and it took me a long time, I probably spent well over, you know, um, well over a thousand dollars. And I, I do have to tell a little side story, and not to be self serving, but um, and it's this kind of starts to go into how I got into the five hundred first. Yeah. So mm -hmm. back in two thousand eleven, um, I uh, became a kidney donor. My aunt um, needed a kidney. In fact, it's the aunt that took me way back in 
1977 to see Star Wars for the first time when I was eight years old. She needed a kidney. I donated the kidney. And my best friend, a good friend from college, was Darth Vader in the 501st. And he had been pushing me and pushing me to uh, become a stormtrooper for a long time. And I was acquiring the armor and I was spending a lot of money, but I was like, the helmet was the big dollar item. That was the big ticket item. And I'm like, dude, I'm never gonna become a stormtrooper until I get that helmet. So I'm literally laying in the hospital, donated a kidney, and I wake up and at the end of my bed is sitting, is a brand new stormtrooper helmet. And it was not a Ruby's, it was like, you know, the best of the best, it was an elite one. And, uh, and then he kind of helped me assemble the rest of it. But uh, even after I got the helmet, I can't, I, I can't even remember what the helmet cost. Let's say it was 400 bucks, you know? So I had already spent upwards of, you know, $900, $1,000 on it. And then on top of that, the helmet was $400. Now, fast forward to 2015, I'm at, I went out to Star Wars Celebration, Anavos was there and they were doing pre-orders for the complete set, the complete kit of a TK and I paid $300. So, and it came with a helmet and their helmet was so much lighter than the one I've been wearing. Like if you go to a baseball game, for example, you're wearing that heavy helmet, that bucket for four hours. Um, it gets very uncomfortable. So when Anavos came out with theirs, you know, I was like 350 and I think they're a lot more now. I think if you go into Anavos and it's spelled A-N-O-V-O-S, I believe, um, you know, I, I, there are a lot more now. Um, and I can, uh, I'll, I will find out uh, before the end what they what they cost now, but I guarantee. So really you quickly, for, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with rubies, rubies uh, they did different levels of costuming a little bit, but a lot of the stuff that they rubies had done, including the Star Wars stuff, and I have a rubies uh, Darth Maul mask. It's like full figure stuff. It's a little bit better off. It doesn't break so easily. It's not like the stuff you find in your like Target or Walmart or the stuff you find now. That kind of a throwaway. Actually, uh, if you still have rental Halloween costume places, or if you've seen one of those in a while where they pop up during the Halloween and rent them out, typically those costumes are more like the, the Ruby's costume. Costumes that are meant to be worn year after year, a little bit more accurate, a little better off. Um, some cosplayers use them too. Uh, if you find those stuff and you can find them every once in a while, especially like, like I said, like the Darth Maul, there's a couple other masks besides that down there. And Early on, Ruby did Ruby's do the early on superhero line? I think they did, where it was just a plastic mask that came over. I think uh, so, yeah. Yep. And but it's you, funny, I always thought Ruby's was great. I thought they were really high quality, but then you get to the 501st and they're got all oh, no, no, Ruby's is crap. You yeah. know, they, they did not let it was not good enough. Not yeah. nearly good enough. And and I just checked a, a, a TK today, if you go to animals.com, it's twelve hundred dollars for the kit. And again, they call it kits, right? They're not selling you pre-built Stormtrooper armor. You still have to assemble it. Um, mm -hmm. But the Anavos comes with a complete guide to assemble, um, where I had to kind of, you know, beg, borrow, steal, and learn from other people how to do it. You know, we used to have armor parties. They, right here in Michigan, I was like three guys that lived near me. I went over to their house, and they helped me assemble my armor. It was, it was very <laughs> cool. So this is so what I know of it too is like in or, in or around 07, because I'm a big fan of Timothy and uh, the Thrawn books and everything. That was the first time too. Like I didn't know how serious it was. Now going back, I looked on it after you're saying that is because like you know Timothy was one of the first guys that got the 501st in one of the books. It wasn't. It still wasn't considered canonized, but it was considered like uh, accepted kind of because wasn't it, what was your first? What was the first tagline? Wasn't it something like? 501st, we do it right or something like that. And then it changed to Vader's first after that or something to that effect. Well, I, don't remember. Um, I think LB Johnson had labeled it Vader's fist very early on. And I think it, again, we're going to have to check this. I don't, you know, this is anecdotal. Please don't mm -hmm. hold me. <laughs> but I think it was when he saw the fist in Empire Strikes Back. Um, you know, he it all goes back to kind of that when he was in the special editions. And he kind of labeled the 501st Vader's fist very early on. But, um, you know, we could we could uh, uh, validate that. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, like, but that's kind of it. it. It actually, as a Star Wars fan, I think, and an outsider, not somebody who is part of the 501st, we kind of saw it around and we kind of would always hear rumors of these guys building their own armor and, like, doing all this charity work. And I think that was a big part of it, right? I think part of it, too, I've seen interviews before where they're like, we, we were going in, whoever was trying to do it nationally was like, we were going into hospitals and trying to explain people, like, we're going to dress up in stormtrooper outfits and come in and people will like this. And they're like, wait, what do you charge? They're like, we don't charge. 
we don't do any, we're just trying to help out. And they're like, this makes no sense. And they're like, just let us try and we'll show. I mean, obviously there's no Facebook back then. There's no like right. uh, YouTube's Instagram me's or whatever else is going on uh, there. So you couldn't already find on the internet what was going on. You, you guys had to go pretty much knock door to door and say like, look, Hey guys, we're here to help out. And uh, yeah, and I mean, if you think about it, I mean, this, this is, I don't want to get too dark or anything, but if you think about it, grown men dressing up in costumes and your face is covered, and you're going into like a children's hospital, clearly they're going to be suspect right out of the gate. Right. So they're going to want, you know, background checks, things of that nature. And so, and I wasn't around, I, I joined in 2012. And by the time I joined it, it already like the DeVos hospital in Grand Rapids here and other children's hospitals, they would, you know, beg, you know, not beg, but they would love for us to come because it, basically these kids are in pain. And it would take them out of that for one day. So they that interview, it. that interview after you just said that, guys in Mastro Men, makes sense what the guy was saying. Because I was like, I don't understand why hospitals would. Now I get it. Yeah. Okay. Grown men that. wearing masks led into the children's ward in oh, a hospital. That's, wow. you know. Yeah. I'm just thinking about, uh, I guess I'm too innocent sometimes. Um, yeah. But no, that's cool. And then, like, like you said, I mean, and then when I think the big part came out was because it was around 07 when we start hearing and we're like, wait a minute, these guys aren't because Lucas made, it was made a big point that it, it's not actually a Lucas uh, oh, films. Yeah. Uh, group. Right. It actually is. He, it's like an associate or like he accepts them, but I mean, Drawn had already put it in the books at that point that came out in some video games where they started talking about the five Oh first. And then it was Vader's first and stuff and like all that. So that's how we do it. But I'd always heard over the years, rumors like, kind of like what you explained, well, it makes more sense now. Cause I think the rumors that we had all heard and obviously it's not completely wrong, but some of it was like, since Lucas didn't make it and we all know the merchandising history and the history with star Wars and the history with some of his other movies that he really wasn't into the five Oh first, but now the way you explain it, it makes a little bit more sense, but also too, let's fast forward then because then what happens with Disney, right? Is that where we're going now with this? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think um, as we move into that, I wanted to read you guys kind of our chartle. Our, our, our charter, our mission, our uh, charter, from our charter. So, and this will kind of lead into this where, where Disney comes into play. So this is the right off the 501st Legion's website. You can go there and it's it basically says, we're an all volunteer organization formed for the express purpose of bringing together costume enthusiasts, right? And basically the 501st is a collective identity for which to operate. And really what we seek to do is promote the interests of Star Wars through the building and wearing of quality costumes and to facilitate the use of these costumes for Star Wars related events, as well as contributions to the local community through costume charity and volunteer work. So it's clearly stated, this isn't for pay. It's a volunteer organization. We're costume enthusiasts, we're fans, right? It's, uh, you know, if you think about fan films or whatever. Um, but where things get a little tricky is when you're going to a local children's hospital or you go to a kid's birthday party or you go to a library. Every in May, we have uh, May, the, uh, May the 4th, and then we have Star Wars Reads Day where we come to, to libraries. But we started showing up at sporting events, right? So we started showing up at nationally televised sporting events. And there was what, yeah, there's me at uh, Comerica Park um, on top of the dugout. It was, that was awesome. Um, and other things like we were showing up at concerts, we were, we were all over the place and a uh, big, uh, big, uh, um, sponsor of us is Weird Al. Cause as you guys know, where else can you get a bunch of stormtroopers? Cause every one of his concerts, he has multiple star Wars songs, you know, uh, bye bye this Anakin guy and all that. So, um, so there was this one, and I don't know if this was the incident that triggered some concern when Disney took over Lucasfilm, but there was a Darth Vader on pitcher's mound. And he threw out the first pitch and he just flubbed it. It went like five feet in front of him. And it started to be like, uh, you know, uh, if you guys are going to be on a national stage, nationally televised, you're representing the brand, the Star Wars brand. We have got to put some guidelines together. We've got to make sure that Vader can clear the home plate when he's <laughs> tossing the ball. Like, this is a Sith Lord. we got to address this. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so no, you know, wasn't that wasn't that a uh, MLB um, 
Star Wars May the Fifth um, celebration kind of game. Did, did I, that it happen? Was, it was, and yeah. like here in Michigan, we have Tigers Night, Star Wars Tigers Night, mm -hmm. and they they it's all Star Wars themed. They usually create merchandise for the game, like bobbleheads. One year it was Verlander versus Vader. Another one they had a poster with Miguel Cabrera, and so it started to become you know, and that, that starts to get in the for profit area. Right. Mm -hmm. It's still for charity. We still actually raise money for um, different organizations. And one of the ones we we were you know, not completely affiliated with, but one that we really are closest to our heart is the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And it's one of the reasons I got into it, because uh, I actually went to a benefit for a young uh, a young boy here in Michigan where he had brain cancer. And we all went and helped him you know, get in touch with Lucasfilm for uh, Make-A-Wish. So that's, you know, it was more like Disney was just like, hey, if you're going to be in a nationally televised event, there's some guidelines we want you to follow. Um, and uh, and so that's that's kind of where we started to, uh, you know, be a little more serious about who we allow <laughs> and what we allow at these games. Um, and and for, for example, I don't I don't know if this was, the MLB that decided this or who, but we don't throw the first pitch up, pitches out anymore, um, which bums me out because two of my buddies, my friend who plays Darth Vader and the other one's Chewbacca, both of them got to throw out a first pitch um, at a Detroit Tigers game. Uh, I was a stormtrooper, so I, there's 20 of us. We don't get to throw out any pitches. So I don't know. If see a stormtrooper. I don't know if it's just about that, but I know that there was a lot of support too in the communities. And I know we, we give her, uh, we give her, we criticize her every time we can for stuff she does wrong, just like we do anybody else with Star Wars. But I know that Kathleen Kennedy had a lot to do with legitimizing the 501st, especially under the Disney bandwagon. And originally in 07 was talking to Lucas about, hey, look, maybe we should be a little bit more friendly to these guys. But also to Dave, you know, we talk about Philly and all the time and Dave was it was I mean besides Timothy, which I mean I guess that's why I like these guys because they're fans just like us. Like you're obviously a fan, that's why you became one. But these fan guys were like, yeah, we're putting them in there, and and Dave did. I mean Dave was one. He put in you know we talked about our he put in K two S O or K two K D R the droid that's named after the daughter of the Katie uh, after Katie. Uh, but he also he also included a lot of five hundred first stuff with Anakin uh, yep. to go over that too. There's um, another guy, and I don't want to. Um, I don't want to get too far into who we. You yeah, know. Quick, quick question because it's eating yeah. it's eating me up inside. Did the Wookiees pitch clear the plate? I mean, it, it did, did, right? Yeah. The guy, <laughs> so it's funny. Um, I, I I can't talk too much about this guy, but he is a big dude, and he's a muscular dude, and he can throw a baseball. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Wookie had no problem, and That's our Darth right. Vader didn't either. Our Darth. I remember That's the day my buddy. Darth Vader was so nervous. He's throwing out the first pitch. He did not want to flub it. And uh, he went out and he threw it. It wasn't great, but it made it the home plate. So, I, but I why y'all threw him? I can't can imagine I in, in any costume trying to throw a baseball, to oh, be 100% honest. Usually the guys in the Wookiee, they're on stilts, man. That's, yeah. Is that the same guy that's still in the Wookiee? Can I ask this? Can yep. I, it is. Okay. Yeah. That dude, yes. <laughs> so you see him around. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in his copies, I mean, he has to wear stilts. So, uh, yeah. yeah. The next time you got to come out here, I'll tell you, or one of the events, you got to see him, dude. The guy will have you stand that. Uh, he, it's beautiful. All the kids always, whenever he shows up, they love that guy. He's yeah. really good. He's really He's cool. He's a really nice guy, too. Actually, I just I had a beer with him uh, last weekend. So Everybody cool. loves a Wookiee. Yeah. Thank and Wookiee, you. <laughs> this Wookiee. I got to introduce you guys. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I think, is there more we want to cover on that? or is Well, there was one other, you had mentioned Kathleen Kennedy and a few others. There was one guy that is um, somebody that I've kind of admired for a long time was Steve Sansweet. Um, he uh, he was kind of the, the one that put together the documentary on the um, Blu-ray for the 501st, and he had a big part in the, uh, uh, the Rose Bowl. But um, he was one of the folks and i think he worked in pr in lucasfilm he really helped um kind of legitimize us if, if that's a way to put it but um now how yeah, many how many, how many troops are there now how many um sanctions are there now there's quite a few oh, there, huh? there's there's a ton i mean like for example 
there's so many TKs, we had to go to five digits. So that means there's at least 10,000 of us. <laughs> right? Nice. Um, That's awesome. And, you know, I'd, I'd have to go to the, uh, sure. the 501st uh, site here. I'll, I'll tell you real quick. So this is something interesting too. Like you say that, but it seems like around, and I'm not, I understand where Lucas stood on and all, but like there, it seemed like these guys have been so good. And you got to think about this. I mean, it's not just cosplayers, but these guys that are in the 501st and are in the Rebel Legions, they've been so good that they've gotten support by almost every major person in every major event that's been in there. Guys have written them into comic books. They have written them into novels. Uh, the story group obviously is a big fan, Pablo and them over there. Obviously, Dave's a huge fan because he not only used them there, but him and John then, guess what they did this? I mean, we all know this. If you don't... Uh, you can, I don't know, it might be in the after thing for Mandalorian, but the stormtroopers that are in the Mandalorian, those are lifetime 501st guys. Like, though, they actually went out there and got 501st guys. Like, yeah. that's how crazy that is. Like, that's how much now from 07 that they've been pushed. And it has been, you know, let's give it, you know, as many credits as we can. We probably missed a bunch of other people in it, but like all these people that, you know, the guys that were in production that pushed it, the guys that actually were writing pushed them you know the guys that were doing the show were pushing it and the higher ups were kind of pushing it it's, it's really well, good I, mean, I can see as as a platform based you know when they're filming tv shows or movies or whatever if you already have ten thousand plus people with stormtrooper outfits that are movie authentic why would you not tap that that free resource why would you not i mean if i was part of the 501st and they came to me and said hey would you like to come in your uniform and be part of this filming? You know, we're not going to pay you, but you, you know, get a little screen time. I would be like, dude, when do I leave? You brought up a good point. Where else are you going to come up with a hundred stormtroopers on a moment's notice? Yeah, that's why I was trying to refer reference earlier was the gallery. Yeah, if you look in the gallery, they really do. Now, I'm not yeah. sure they didn't pay them, but you do have extras already built in. And I think that was a big push from a lot of guys. And for Dave and John to just go out there and be like, hey, listen, dude, we're going to – I mean, they could – they they tongue-in-cheek it kind of, I think, a little bit when they're talking about it because they're like, well, you know, we had to find some guys, and where else would you well, – wink, wink, <laughs> pickle, pickle. I think it was like a whole plan from early on that these guys have been. And I think it's just because you are so visible, right? Like I think everybody, you know, going from back in 07 when, you know, we're seeing the remastered cuts and kind of hearing these rumors about this group to now. Um, and you see them at games and you see them and people have a better feeling for what it is. I mean, the droid builder club, obviously they have a Katie droid in the droid builder club. And like, mm -hmm. and actually isn't that kind of like an, I mean, it's not the same thing, but it's kind of a spawn off how all these clubs start happening and everything like that. Like, it's really big and it's really cool. And it's cool to be like, that's kind of why it's like cool to be part of the star Wars fandom because like how many other groups, and I don't know because I'm fans of other stuff, but I'm not really like fan fanatic fans about other stuff. I like other stuff obviously, but like how many other areas are you where, where people are actually going out there and forming their own club specifically to do good so much of the still that at one point they're getting kind of like, Hey guys, we're not sure this is okay by the people who produce the stuff and then still fighting through that to be like, no, you don't see what we're doing. We are, we're here for this. This will work. You're right. When you put in the point of like older dudes dressing up in helmets, sounds creepy, but like, Hey, look, no, no. And, and they could have easily folded up and been like, look, we'll give up. Like, fine, this doesn't working. And said, they said, no, 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 we are on the right. We're on the right side of things. We just need to let other people understand it. And, and that's cool. I'm glad that you guys as a whole, I mean, I know probably you didn't get out to 2012, but you're still keeping it going. Like, I'm glad that you guys do that. Like, that's so cool that you guys are doing that. Yeah. And there's a couple of, uh, just to answer your question, uh, Wookie, I was looking it up there. There's currently about 14,000 plus members, um, 70 plus garrisons around the world. Okay. And there was one other thing that you had brought up, Marco, around the charities is we don't really force you to donate to charities, but we highly encourage it, right? Mm -hmm. We're None of it is like for pay, right? We're, we're not like saying, hey, you got to give us $200 to this charity. It's right. all volunteer. And I think yeah. that's one of the big things is, you know, it, it, when you have a 501st guy show up at a charity event or at your party, these are not paid actors. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, you go to the baseball game, we get beers thrown at us. We get people get drunk. They they think you're paid. So they want to take your picture and you'll get yanked into pictures. And we're more than willing to take pictures with little kids and but man, we're like, hey guys, we're not getting paid for this. We're doing it to raise money for charity. We're doing it because we love it. So yeah, give us a break sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> well, you should you should treat 
everyone and each other with a respect anyway, especially someone who's donating their time. And, and the 501st has generated so much time and money and given it freely time and time again. It, it's just a really great organization. One of my first introductions to them, I knew about them, but the first time I ever met any was at a con in, in Denver. Oh, geez. When was that? Two, 2002, 2003. Um, oh, it was later than that. Uh, two, geez, when was it? That was 10, 10, 11 years ago, actually. So it was like 2011. It was, yeah, right in that time. And I mean, they had a, a full R2 unit that they were building and they had information, and it, I was blown away. I knew about them, but when I first actually met, part of the 501st I face to face and talked with them man what i encourage anyone and everyone if you get a chance go go talk with the 501st and members of it because they're great people and they they just wow what talk about putting your your best foot forward and really just knocking it out of the park. It, it's right. amazing, and they're fun to talk to. Yeah, and, and it's so funny. I'm, I'm you know, I'm making my, myself sound like a saint and self-serving. But, guys, I got to be honest with you. When you're dressed up like a stormtrooper and you're on stage with Weird Al and there's 14,000 people screaming and yelling, or you're at the Tiger game and you're walking on the field or all these people want to take your pictures, you kind of get that taste of being a celebrity. And I'll never forget the first year I went to a Comerica game. I'm walking around. Everybody wants my picture. Everyone's excited. Then you take the helmet off, and you're just walking around in the crowd, and nobody knows who you are. They're like, oh, who's this guy? It's, it's kind of a big letdown. <laughs> you know, like, hey, I was a celebrity for 15 minutes, but I wasn't a celebrity. I'm a stormtrooper, right? So, you know, it's not all self-serving. We, the, the guys that do this, we love it. You know, we want to we want to be – we want to geek out and we could get to wear it in front of 14,000 people. That's why, you know, two things. First off, you're lucky you're not uh, in Philly. Cause you know how they treat Santa Claus. I doubt they treat stormtroopers any better. <laughs> 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 and number two, something I will say, I mean, it was more of the rebel Alliance guys or stuff like that, but uh, I've run into them before. And if you're honestly, if you're above a kid, if you're after, if you're after teenage years or preteen years, probably, um, Paul's advice is good. Let the kids go first, but they have, in my experience, now that I have little ones been so good about, Hey guys, okay. You 40 year old guy. Cool. Like it. Don't worry. We'll get you in here, but we're going to take care of the kids first and they get down on their level yeah. and they, they got the card. Absolutely. I know you have a card too. They got the little card things. And, and then my little kids collect the card things all the time. And then they're asking me 15 times. Remember we met, Stormtrooper, blah, 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 leaky trooper. Remember we went, this this Darth, remember we met, because when, when she started getting to the Rebel Alliance, I mean, those guys, they're all over the place. So, yeah. um, you know, it's always uh, been 99.9% .9 a really great experience with you guys in the Rebel Alliance. And I, I really thank you guys because it's great what you guys do. Thanks. And, and one other um, thing, Wookie, you had asked about reaching out to the 501st. I'm just going to pull up really quick here. I'll show you how you contact us because there's actually a form um, for our Great Lakes Garrison, but you can go to the 501st website and find out how you can request, you know, hey, I'd like you guys to show up. There's a form you fill out. So uh, check it out. And, um, you know, we're the Great Lakes Garrison here in uh, Michigan and uh, around the Great Lakes. But um, yeah, check us out. We'll, uh, and, and I'll be honest, I got to be completely honest, ever since this whole, um, the virus and COVID popped up, there's not a lot of events right now. So we're getting to do a lot of the smaller stuff, going back to libraries, kids' birthday parties, things like that. I mean, we'll do everything to kids' birthday party to showing up at Comerica Park. So, <laughs> kind of already are wearing the mask, right? Oh, <laughs> Once yeah. again, the Great Lakes Garrison, the Michigan chapter, the best 501st chapter there That's is. Right. Right in, in the whole world. We are the, we're yeah. the first. We're the first of Vader's now, first. I oh. do go to celebration, so be careful. The, the the guys in Belgium scare the crap out of me. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna say we're the second best in the world. I don't want them to you know. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Hey, so we got some more stuff. We told you we were gonna talk about that for a little bit. Paul, thank you very much for that. But now we're gonna talk about a couple of the uh, and kind of was the joke with the clones versus the troopers. We're gonna talk about a couple of the trooper or a couple of clones that are still around and still have some relevance to this day. Um mainly comic book stuff or in the, in the thing, I think we'd be remiss if we don't start off with one of the most famous ones who's still kind of around some of the stuff. Uh, the bald headed guy to the right, 
that happens nope, to be not me, the other bald headed guy in the picture. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <Your arm left. laughs> yeah. and, and the two guys in there actually are Echo and Fives. And why Fives is important is Fives is the guy, if you guys all recall, he was the first one with the chip theory when he came down to Clone Wars. He ends up uh, unfortunately passing away, and Rex ends up getting um, understanding that maybe the chips are implanted in them. And that's why he kind of in that last series. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched the last series of Clone Wars, but when they try to turn on Ahsoka Tana in that, um, at the end of it, and Rex is holding it off, that's pretty much, and then Jesse ends up dying, but like that's pretty much why is because he, him, uh, another guy by the name of uh, Kix, and then uh, had kind of figured out that there was something in Five's head. Five was supposed to go to the Empire, he ended up dying. That's all in Clone Wars. Watch it again, watch it every year, watch it multiple times. But they keep bringing back Rex, Rex back. They brought Rex back in Rebels, and um, look at how much back. better he looks with that sexy big white gray beard. <laughs> there's, there's something about that that just looks good, doesn't it? Uh, so they brought him back as an older version with lots of wrinkles and looking a little bit rough with a gray beard. Uh, Wiser and experienced. In Wiser Rebels, experienced. With and uh, Ruff, Wolf and Gregor. Greg, Greg was a crazy guy. I guess crazy names get you crazy nut. But um, it has always been debated if Rex was around or not. One of the biggest debates because Dave and uh, Pablo were kind of joking around about it. Uh, this guy right there, I, th I think his name was Steve something. He's the guy that was in the, they called him Pops in Rebels. And for a long time, there was a couple things going around the internet, maybe some misleading articles that said that, it wasn't really misleading. It said that they confirmed that he was. They never really actually confirmed that. And it's gone back and forth now. And they kind of said, yeah, we've never confirmed that. So we don't know if that's actually Rex or not. We will talk about some books in a little bit about uh, good Rex books um, coming up. Uh, with that being said, the the, way, the whales, the guys from there, that those are the guys that are like the historical keepers kind of of Star Wars. If you recall in Rogue One, the uh, blind guy who had the little... This, you know, and kept repeating, I am one with the force. The force is one with me. They're, they're pretty much historical keepers, almost like librarians. Uh, they neither are Jedi nor Sith, but they're kind of work in the positive realm of the force uh, in multiple sources now in books such as like, I think, well, they had their own book, but also in tales. Oh, tales from a certain point of view, as a matter of fact. Um they have mentioned that all the clones are dead. Uh, but with that being said, we get back here, and one of the most popular clones starting to come back is the guy with all the stuff in his head. We know him as Echo. We know that he's going to show up again in the Bad Batch. He did show up in that animatics thing where they did the where they were trying to get uh, Yoda off of uh, Kasiki with the uh, Wookiees. Uh, he did show up in that little thing. So I think we're probably going to see that again. Once again, I think we're looking at him and that in the cartoon coming up because they're doing a Bad Batch series. But there is one last clone trooper. So like they said the life of them, they're all gone. That's almost true. Um, there's one, and it has shown up in a couple books, and it has actually does have an appearance in a comic book. Uh, this is the comic book. It is the ash can for Star Wars Adventures. Um, and in the ash can, there's a page. We've talked about it before. This is the Aja Adventures page. Um, but right here in the corner, and I will blow it up for us, there's a guy with a black goatee and a beard. And what the presence, what's important about him is kind of the guy to the left, which is uh, Sidon. I don't know. Man, I wish I had Mike here to fix it because I know I'm screwing this guy's name up. It's I-T-H. A-N-O, uh, You saw him in um, Maz's Castle. He was in the background stuff. He's actually part of the Crimson Corps. Crimson something or another. Anyways, they're pretty much a pirate group, and they go on this quest. They hear uh, something from an old clone trooper that says there's a ship that's crashed, and it happens to be the, an emperor, the Emperor's treasure barge. In Tales from a Certain Point of View. Uh, and in a Pirates and Aliens, I believe, was another novel. They talk about them going out there. And what they find on that ship is this guy right here, which is Kix. And Kix was the medic in um, both Clone Wars, the TV show, and then 
Uh, oh, then you see him again at the end when they did season seven. He's one of the guys that first runs into the Bad Batch. Uh, so they keep bringing him back. They keep putting him in storylines. Like I said, that's his first appearance, cameo, whatever you want to call it. He is in that ash can. Um, some of the other good books, obviously, to get. Uh, there is one other book that has to specifically deal with him. Uh, that's this book. Uh, there's a. This is 18 for Star Wars Adventures, same type of thing. Um, there's this page right here. Look, this is really sketchy. This is where it gets confusing. I don't care. But if you're a completionist, you should probably pick up this book. One, If you read what they're talking about in here, uh, he's pretty much telling the story about how there's some clone that files there. The rumor is the guy to the left right now with no goatee, however, may or may not be him. I think that's about the same thing that we were talking about Rex being in uh, Return of the Jedi up there. Who knows? Maybe, you know, that's stuff that they always come back to. They always put out uh, later on. We've talked about that in past things, like when we did the uh, Aaron and Scott runs and stuff like that, how they always have a tendency to go back and say, yep, that was the guy in the background or something like that. So I would expect something soon to come out about that since we know that they're redoing a lot of these clone things. Um, one series that you should probably start touching on if you can start reading and getting it. Now, this book came out during COVID. Um, it mainly has to deal with Rex and Cody as the two main identifiable clones. However, it does have other clones in it. I think it's up to number five at the time of this recording. It really follows Anakin and Obi-Wan going around doing different things and really uh, gives a little bit of back focus on some of the uh, clones. Uh, if you're going for your completionist, anyway, if you're going for your completionist runs, uh, make sure you don't forget this one right here. I know people were grabbing it for the first canonized Ventress, but we already showed you what that book was and the two pages she was on. However, it is, as you can see on the cover, we've got a little bit of, uh, we've got a little bit of clone action on there, including a story about Rex. And that would be his version of it. And this would also be his, the first cover non helmeted worth a grab. Great story in there about the five Oh first, which is really good. Um, a couple German prints for you guys out there. If Ford's out there or anybody else who's, uh, Robert, uh, who likes the foreign things, and I guess I'm just getting into this because I just finally got my notes a week ago uh, <laughs> that I'm finally getting some books in. <laughs> so hopefully we'll do a little thing with the boys over there, Royville and uh, a boy Z, uh, yeah. and how okay, that experience. We can fill Z and, and Royville some foreigns and be like, yeah, go get them. You, you uh, already hit me on, on, my, on my – now I'm looking for foreign books. So this is German magazines, right? So here we go. This is Rex's first appearance. Uh, in, uh, and this is number one of the Star Wars Rebels uh, one, I believe, which is the magazine. And then around 18, the Star Wars magazine 18, they also do a piece. This is actually an interesting book, Leaky, and I think we talked about this before. This is kind of an interesting book, and I'm going to pull it down here, 18, because this also has um, a, double, a double kind of thing. I, I know when we go to one of your favorite sites, uh, Bricklinks. Bricklinks. Yeah, that's like on Bricklink, you can put out there like what you're looking for and everything else. I know this book pops up a lot on Bricklink because it's a foreign Lego cover, um, which is, I guess, is cool. I guess it's a collectible thing in Legos, whatever. But I know people are looking for that book too. Uh, we know how magazines in the US are hard to get, we know how hard it is to get foreign. If you guys see either one of these someplace, you know, just might be a that's a cool thing to have in a collection. We think all these you are kind of, if you can find the American version, pick it up. Well, I don't think so. Yes. But I, how I think German, the German magazines worked were a little bit different. It's not like a variant of the U S I don't no, think no, that, but that, whole, that whole run of, because they have a bunch of the Lego star Wars, American version. Yeah. Um, yeah they do. And, and they have a bunch of the runs of the, of the other one too. The, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, the two actually Rex as a, a clone. I assuming it's Rex because it was based off the original Rex. And it was Trooper One and Trooper Two, mm -hmm. which one of them obviously was Rex. There is a cover. I think it's around thirty-two somewhere around there. That is now. Remember Rex, just like Ahsoka Tana, their first appearance is in Clone Wars, the Clone Wars first book. That was their first overall appearance. Obviously, that book is great. We love that book. You should have that book in your collection already. I know the price of that one keeps going up. Um, these are other ones to fill in. Like if you want first, like canon appearance, first Marvel appearance. Or if you just want some German stuff that's really kind of cool, grab those because they're they're pretty good. Um, they're identifying more and more people in that Clone Wars series, so that might be something to, to to grab too. Like I said, you know, it's a good read. 
I've started reading them. I'm behind by two books, so I'm not going to get too much into the series. But hey, for you guys that are out there that are collecting whole series runs, you know, we always talk about cool things like little niche things you might want to get. They're not that, um, obviously, the Clone Wars. Oh, um, sorry to cut you off. There was one correction I wanted to make. It's actually called Brick Set. That's where you can go out and get the Lego magazines. Brick Link is more for the bricks themselves. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, so it's like a, I, I can't, yeah, I couldn't remember where it was. I knew it was on like the Bricklings or Brick Sets or whatever it was. Yep. Either way, so go out there, you know, obviously too, if you have a bunch of these, you know that there's people on that site looking for these too, uh, for this book in, uh, now they said it was 18, but if I recall correctly, that's a 2017 publication. So um, make sure you, you, it is 17. So when you're trying to look for it, I know it gets confusing when you're in the foreign markets, um, watch, watch once again, watch, on this channel, we have a foreign show and we have two guys who are more than happy, actually more than two. Cause I know Robert Ford who watches the show and he's probably gonna be in the chats. He's very good with that types of stuff too. He's really into the foreign market. The guys are really great over there. They really will help you out. If you have any questions, that's another rabbit hole, like Legos and everything else we talk about in star Wars, it, it'll get you going, but it's something to collect. Um, I always love the Japanese stuff. I should talk to him. They've got some just crazy posters and stuff of Star Wars in Japan. I love it. Yeah, that's I love their stuff, man. I just I love it. It, it is. Just it's looks crazy. so cool with, with the way that they the the lettering and the word and and just uh, they're they're it reminds me almost a little bit of the old samurai movie kind of style, you know, titles. It just they're uh, so. Well, even the playwright, yeah, exaggerate everything, which is fantastic. And the color, the color difference with yeah, but, purple backgrounds, and it's awesome. I like how they still make the 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 bill the playbills the same, and a lot of those covers are based off those playbills, like the original ones, like back in the set sixties and seventies. Yeah, like, it's cool how they still do a lot of that stuff. Yeah, which is really cool. Um, and so so that kind of covers our clone thing, except for this. Wait, 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 wait! It's Leaky's birthday. Leaky, what'd you get for your birthday, buddy? Hold on, let me put you on single screen. Yeah, here you can see it. Um, you know, not not the most expensive birthday present, but uh, and I will, we'll throw up. Uh, this is the 501st Clone Troopers, uh, and uh, so this guy, uh, it's only 285 parts, and you can get it at you know you can get it at Target for like 30 bucks. But the problem is, I haven't been able to get one of these for for you know they released them about a month ago. First run was out. They never really even made it to the stores. I was actually way up in Marquette, Michigan with my son, and the Walmart there had one left, but there was a kid that wanted it. I'm like, I'm not going to take it out of a kid's hands. So, you know, I'm not going to be that guy. Um, and then I so guy. went by, couldn't find them anywhere. The first run sold out. Then the, the second run they just released, I don't know, about a week ago. And, man, you, you had to, like, run to the store to get it. But my uh, son actually got me one, picked it up. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm more of a, a, a original trilogy guy, but I'm getting really into Clone Wars, mostly from hanging out with you guys. But, uh, so I was really, really happy to get my hands on this. Um, and actually, um, do a quick, uh, quick, uh, promo. Um, as soon as this, uh, Tales from the, um, Tales from the Dark Side launches, I'm actually going to be doing a, um, low bricks build of, of that and talk about, uh, the 501st a little bit on there too. So we, we will link that. We'll link that under the video. Go over there. His videos aren't that long. They're really good. He does a lot of speed building over there. They're great. I sit down, I watch them, and then I let my kid watch them with me or my kids. So they're really fun to watch. It's really it cool. Up, set. So this yeah, sets up in the 501st. I figured I had to have a Lego set. That says the five hundred first on it. So. Can we give a little spoiler though? Who, who, what clones are? What clones they got? And do they label the clones in that set? No, not really, but there is a um, basically there's a uh, jet trooper and then three clone troopers. Okay. So the the jet trooper is uh, you know the only one that's a little unique uh, compared to the other three. So um, and and why they're so popular? Why everybody's grabbing them? Yeah. Is a lot of people in the uh, Lego mock world, which is my own creation. They want to have armies. So when you get four clone troopers in one set, um, and they've got the cool 501st armor, that's why everybody's just grabbing these things up. So that's something to remember across uh, collectible worlds in Star Wars. People might not think that clones or troopers are that important, 
But one of the reasons why it's hard to find troopers, like special specialty troopers, and you, you'll find this throughout the Black series, you'll find this out through any of any of the collectible series, including the Lego stuff, is uh, the fact is the fact that these guys build armies, like yes. armies. Wasn't yes. there was something? Wasn't there another army? Wasn't there another series that was short because people were just building armies to do videos and stuff out of? Wasn't there another Lego set that was hard to come across because of that? Well, it was very similar. That like, um, and and you know what's crazy is I always thought you know the movies were the most popular thing, but Clone Wars now is insanely popular. The cartoon show, so any set that had Clone Wars and you got multiple clones, um, they would buy those. And a lot of the armies, these my own creations, they want the they want the battle droids, battle droids. and the clones. So anything that had multiple battle droids or tanks or any of that. Did they, have, they had there wasn't there a, if I remember and maybe you can remember too maybe it won't there was a, a battle droid transport the ground transport that lets yes. off and didn't have a bunch of droids and wasn't it like everybody was trying to get those yep. things that they could build up yeah 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 yep. so just remember that guys when you see these coming out and you're like I don't understand why this stuff is selling why it's flying out there it it like it seems like hey a trooper's a trooper a trooper it obviously isn't and right. and these. Well, and there's there's videos on YouTube of guys going into a Walmart and literally emptying the entire shelf into their basket mm -hmm. so they can build an army of troopers. Yeah, they should leave some for behind. You know, it's always yeah, good time to leave one or two behind. And don't rip my kids' hands. Oh, no. thank you for that story. That, that there's nothing that annoys me more than that. Yeah. Um, you got to have fans to sell it to fans. You know what I mean? Like you got to yep. build them up. You're gonna sell it to them. So yeah, being a grown man that dresses up like a stormtrooper and Legos are kids' toys. Really, the kids gotta come first. Yeah, I mean that's like a you know I'm a comic guy. That's kind of like what I I know people don't always agree with it, but like, and, and it's okay. I just want to put this out there. It is okay not to open your toys. You, you <laughs> can you you totally can just put it in a box and no. put it off to the side mm -hmm. and wait and let your kids have it years down the road. Yeah, it's I, okay I, I, not no, to no, open it. I, 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 because I, I want to get these guys. I want to. I want to play with these guys. <laughs> well, that's not okay, actually. So, Paul, you I get it. I understand. You but this conversation earlier, where we had Mike and the guys over there. But um, no, the proper thing to do is buy two. Yeah. One to open, one yep. to keep. Boogie. Yep. And if you got kids, then it's buy three. One for the kid, <laughs> one for <Yes>. you. <laughs> yeah. So, anyone listening out there, if anyone wants to get me a second one, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, any birthday presents that anybody wants to get them. Yeah. Hey, funny, uh, the, the real thing I wanted for my birthday was there's something out there called the Ultimate Collector Series Moss, Moss Lisley Cantina. Yeah. 3,000 yeah. pieces, 21 yeah. big, big figures, um, and it's, but it's 350 bucks. And that's, you know, I got to draw the line somewhere. Where this this is still only $29.99 if you can find one at Target or Walmart. So I got to pick a, I, I got to start listening to you, Wookie. I, I have to get one. Put it on a shelf. You know, I'm not assembling armies. That's not my deal. So I think I, I think I can resist temptation to have a second one that I don't open. Now I, I will say, I own a complete set of the first run and the second one, including the Falcon and all that. And um, every one of them got opened. Every one of them got assembled to make sure that all the pieces were there. And I have sure. since put them all back in their bags and Ziploc the bags and pieces in there. And I, there were several, I did have to order from Lego more, the pieces that were missing. Um, and they were great. They were awesome about it. They were like, sure it happens, you know, no big deal. And, and shit me all my stuff and everything. They were awesome about it. So and once in a while, oh, I get, once in a while I got to open it and build it and then put it back in the box and replace the tape. There isn't a giant, it's not like other things. I know there's a certain thing. There's this one Cloud City set that came out in 1999 that's mm -hmm. unopened. It's worth thousands of dollars. But um, mostly, if you open them, assemble them, and put them back in the box, there's not a giant loss. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is where the Lego guys are probably going to kill me. They're, oh, no, 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 you got to have it unopened. <laughs> Factory uh, tape means everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always a market for all types. Um yeah, I definitely. Hey, what Paul? I did have a question. What were the extra pieces they gave you? Because there was something that funny that Solo brought up, and anybody who's been to Legos in a while knows. Early on, it was like if you were missing a piece, you were SOL, and if it was out of print, you didn't get it anymore. Mm -hmm. Then Lego started doing the just call us and we'll order it. 
yeah. then they started just like giving extra pieces and it kind of was cool and kind of stunk because some of the rare things like rare lights in the star wars era some of the rare white sabers they give you two or they give you the extra head to darth maul or yep. the crown piece you know the horns used to fall off all the time they started giving extra horns and stuff what were the extra pieces they gave you in that one well, you, you know there's and i haven't opened this guy yet so i haven't checked okay. but i can tell you one thing there's no there's no real rhyme or reason so i bought um i just got a um uh, a Mandalorian battle pack, I don't know, about a month ago. And the little shields, the little clone visors, they always send you like three extras of those. Right. And what was funny was I got it with the Mandalorian. You only have a little antenna that goes on his head. And it also came with a visor. And I'm like, but the Mandalorians don't have the visor. That's clone trooper. It's just a little prepackaged set that they send out with clone troopers. You get four antennas, you get four visors. They just send you that with everything. So, um, and usually at least with me, you'll get an extra lightsaber blade. Yeah. You know, if there's a green lightsaber blade, you'll get an extra one. Well, in the curious, I want the black lightsaber blade, so I'm wondering if they give you two in those old sets. I I don't yeah, know. I don't think they do. I think that was before that. I know in like the, the micro builds or whatever with the Darth Maul, they started just giving you flat out two, two hilts and enough for two lightsabers, period. So like... Yeah. No, that is one thing I always get is a second hilt. You always get like a second lightsaber hill, which is interesting. But there, there doesn't. It's I bought a um, I bought the new ATST, and the extra pieces were just weird. It was bizarre. I was like, you know, one that was a larger brick that I was like, well, this is somewhat a unique brick. Why would they give you two of these? But I'll tell you one thing though: the old days of not of missing pieces, those are long gone. I don't know what um, inventory system they're doing, but last twenty, I've, I'm count, twenty sets and counting, I've not missed a piece. They've got some yeah. seriously good quality control. Yeah, they, they've really stepped it. Now, the most all of mine were barely missing any ever. Um, the one that I did have problems with was my collector's edition X-Wing that I got lucky and I was at the right place, right time. And I got the Falcon, the X-Wing, and, and the um, Thai Infiltrator. Thai, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. all came out. And those were the first collector's issue, quote unquote. And I just happened to be in Minnesota and at the Mall of America at the time that those were the only way that you got those on the day of release was being near a Lego land. You could not get them any other way. And I got lucky and I was at the right place at the right time. And I was able to pick up an original Falcon. Uh, and that was the first Falcon and the collectors X-Wing and Ty and the X-Wing was missing some parts and I had to, and the only way that I could get the X foils and everything to finish was to order some parts. And like I said, they were, they were great. They were just like, yeah, oh, sure, we'll get them, dude. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. yeah. yeah. They really have changed around what they did over there. There is a cool uh, documentary. If you're really into Legos, I can't even remember what it's called, but it kind of shows a new method of way they were doing stuff, how they had changed themselves around. And yeah, how they I, I know that. I'll, we'll we'll put it in the description. It's fantastic. It's, it's actually how they thing. construct them, and yeah, it's yeah. amazing. And how they have the animated stuff, and how they had to start buying um, licensing from other stuff that kind of saved them and everything like that. So it's yep. really cool. If you got an hour or so, I mean, I don't. It's a little, really little scary, just to not to scare people, but the Lego contract expires in 2022 with Star Wars, so they're gonna have to relicense. But they, they it happens all the time, but. It was kind of the latest buzz in all the YouTube videos this week. Oh, 2022, the Lego. Well, yeah, but Star Wars has been known to mess up. Like, there's been some messy <laughs> contracting. Like, I, have, I have a feeling like, all Lucasfilm is making a ton of money off of Well, Lego. I have a feeling that it's a little bit different dealing with somebody who's mad that his first contract was crappy and a multi-billion, trillion-dollar company who's just like, just keep giving us our licensing money. So hopefully come, not the wood will go up here, but they've come a long way from building wooden toys. I'll I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but All the right, Legos are incredibly popular. I mean the Star Wars ones, it's just I can't believe just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I can't believe it either. I mean, they've done a great job. You know, a lot of them too. If you get the magazine, you sign up for that stuff, it tells you which ones are limited and stuff. I think you should fork over three hundred fifty dollars for the set because there's a lot <laughs> I of want one, man. I, after I bought the Razor Crest, I was like, eh, I'm pushing a little bit with uh, with the uh, significant other there. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got to have the other account, the cash account. See, it. we'll talk about it later. Uh, I got to put that one out on the internet. Uh, that's it. I think we're covered. It. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, if you guys have it, we'll, you know, we'll usually be in the live. Well, you probably know because we're already in it. But if you have any other questions on these, make sure you hit us up at the email. Uh, what is it? Again? We're gonna put it in the description because I'm always bad. Maybe we could put it on the bottom of the screen at one point. I think we need to start putting it at the bottom of the screen because I'm really bad about it. Um, I do check it though, just in case you guys want. And if you don't want me to answer, just go, hey, Marco, don't answer this. This is just for Solo Wookie, and I will forward it to him or for Leaky Trooper. I will forward it to them too. Um, but yeah, if you have questions of any of the books that we had or any of the pieces, let us know at Tales from the Dark Side. PDCST, maybe dot com. It might be or hit us on the it. I, was that I don't know. I can't even remember it either. I can't remember it either, man. I'm bad at all that. Um, and hopefully we'll post more stuff that you guys like. Um so yeah, honestly, if I got anything wrong, I'm I'm the first to admit it. I'm in one garrison, right? Then of the so if, if I if you guys learn anything, I'm always loving to hear more about the 501st. So uh, don't. this is first-hand knowledge of uh, one garrison out in the Outer Rim territories. But, you know, <laughs> no, the best, the best garrison there is out there. Hey, <laughs> Wookie, on that note, knowing that everybody likes it because, you know, the Great Lakes is always the best out of all of them. And by the way, uh, if you come from one of those other states, we do have a uh, qualification even to come into our state to make sure that you can be accepted by the 501st, just yes. so you know. All right. Solo, get us out of here. Go ahead and uh, force push that like and force choke that subscribe and saber smash that alarm so you can come see the greatest handsomest faces on this side of the galaxy, folks. And may the force be with you always. 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 All right, guys. We'll see you later. <laughs>